Well, hey boys, I'm back. Hey, I noticed in the last video you could hear the cicadas just uh, chirping away. They're chirping right now. If it's annoying, I apologize. It is summer. It is the weekend. I am outdoors. So hey, man, let's let's rock and roll and, and move this bad boy further. Uh, last time around, we were covering plant chromatography. So I went ahead, I, I ran through it again on my own, uh, just so I could make sure the little filter paper was touching that solution just right. Uh, I took a screenshot for you guys so we can kind of look over our results. Check it out, we got the yellows up here, the xanthophils, the carotenoids. I know I mentioned carotenoids last time. You know, the hint was that word, carrot, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in the bottom, the greenish part, of course the green is responsible for the main color that plants are, because you know, plants are green, like duh, right? Uh, but again, they do change color in the fall in some cases, so we have to have the yellows, the oranges, and the reds, and so forth, and so on. So, that's kind of cool, man. It, uh, I tell you, it, it's not as good as I would have liked. You know, normally if I'm in the lab and I have actual equipment and, you know, actual filter paper, things look a little bit better. But I'm happy, man. You guys can see what's going on, and we'll look at other, other images in the great world of the internet. So, hey, man, it's all good. So... Moving onward, we also talked about alcohol a little bit. You know, alcohol is a volatile liquid, and that's what I wanted to get to today, alcohol. And we're gonna compare that to water. Uh, water's a nice little control group. So in plate number one, I'm gonna pour some water. What's gonna happen to that water? Will it evaporate, you know? Sure, it'll evaporate, but does it take a while? That's the question. Does it take a well, while? Yeah, it'll take an hour, depending on the temperature, of course, an hour, uh, a day, uh, whatever. Your guess is as good as mine. But then on the other plate here, we're going to bust out a little bit of isopropyl, you know, uh, rubbing alcohol. So there we go. Put a little isopropyl on there. I know you probably can't see much, but take my word on it. Let's rub it. Rub it down. And in no time at all, that isopropyl alcohol, I tell you what, it is gone. So that's what, that's what it means to be volatile, okay? Uh, kind of case in point, most of you boys are familiar with things like Purell, uh, especially in this day and age with the grand coronavirus running amok. So, you know what I'm saying? Do I have to dry my hands? No, because it has the alcohol, hence it is volatile. And since I mentioned Corona a little bit, and we're also talking about volatile uh, liquids and whatnot, uh, let me make a quick reference to bleach wipes. You know those Clor Clorox bleach wipes, you use them on your counters and whatever, your desk and a million other places. Uh, bleach is also highly volatile. So if you've had Clorox bleach wipes sitting on the shelf for a while, and you open them up to clean up your desk or your, your dresser, or whatever, uh, that alcohol is long gone, and you know what you were stuck with? You're get, you guess it, man. You guess it. You are stuck with fragrant water. Yeah, I got the cup of love one last time. You're left with fragrant water, and that fragrant water uh, is not going to kill off those germs, the, the viruses and bacteria like the uh, bleach would. That bleach evaporates. Okay, so we're done, man. I think I'm done making videos for the weekend. I'll get back to the grind tomorrow in the classroom. Until then, peace.